The Prince of Wales is king after the longest royal apprenticeship in history. He'll be the best prepared monarch we've ever had, having served so long as sort of tutelage under his mother. Even to him, she was your majesty in public. But watch her face on her 92nd birthday. Your majesty, mummy. In 1952, when Charles was just three, his mother became queen. His destiny was laid out before him. It was a difficult childhood for Charles. As a young queen, his mother put duty and service above all else. One of the things he talks about is this memory of his mother coming to kiss him goodnight on the nursery floor, wearing the imperial state crown. His mother broke with tradition as we saw dramatized on the crown. Prince Charles was the first heir to the throne to be sent to school as opposed to being instructed by private tutors. He was sent away to the same school I gather that Prince Philip also attended and he didn't have the easiest time of it at first. In his 30s, the prince told Barbara Walters he struggled with certain subjects. I think it's not too bad for people to know that the Prince of Wales can also fail in school and they give him a failing grade. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I failed my maths exam three times. I finally got it on the fourth attempt. Prince of Wales became his title in 1969. But at the time, many knew him as a playboy prince. They tried to kind of create him as kind of a James Bond figure. He was referred to as action man, I think, in the 60s, as he like flew planes or did helicopters or rode in jeeps or whatever he was doing. In his early adulthood, he became a helicopter pilot, joined the Naval Air Squadron, and took command of a naval mine hunter. And there were a long line of lovely young ladies who appeared to be potential spouses for him who did not make the final cut. At 31, he proposed to his uncle's granddaughter, Amanda Natchbull. She turned him down. He fell in love with Camilla Shan, but she married someone else while he was in the Navy. On the 30 seconds, I think. Finally, Lady Diana Spencer, the younger sister of a girl he had dated. All of a sudden, this teacher, who was so young and so fresh, had that beautiful smile and ingratiating manner. Suddenly, we discovered that she was the apple of his eye, and before we knew it, they got engaged. I remember thinking what a very jolly and amusing and, and attractive 16-year-old she was, and I mean, great fun, mm. and bouncy and full of life and everything. And um, um, I don't know what you thought of me. But... Pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose in love. Of course. <laughs> Whatever in love means. Yes. Everybody remembered that interview where they were asked if they were in love, and he said yes whatever love is. And that tells you, I think, a little bit about maybe his upbringing, whatever love is from a grown man who's just gotten engaged. It's not the note you want to go out and pick your informal china pattern with. It's emerged that the Prince of Wales, the night before his wedding, really wasn't at all sure whether he was in love with Diana and was actually almost convinced that he wasn't. On that day in July 1981, 750 million people all over the world Only tuned in. Her. So long as you both shall live. I will. It looked as though Cinderella had gotten her prince. How are you enjoying married life? How do you recommend it? I remember going to Australia with them. We were away for six weeks. And, I mean, that was the love tour. I mean, they were over each other like, you know, a rash. I mean, they used to look at each other like they wanted to rush off and uh, rip the clothes off each other. They were that passionate. I mean, it was really, and very tactile, you know, touching. A year later, an heir, and then a second son. They're in very good form indeed. They bring us both an immense uh, amount of happiness. In this, their first interview, 1985 in Kensington Palace, music by William and Harry, and the royal couple still acting like newlyweds. I suspect most husbands and wives find that uh, they often have arguments. But we don't. No, no, no. But occasionally we do, because, I mean, no, we don't. I, I'm, you know, I, <laughs> I, I go on longer sometimes. Yes, but I'm faster. <laughs> there we are. The thing that the British public will always be grateful for is the way she raised her sons and the love and the affection and the touching and the caring that she imbued them with. They're never going to say whatever love is. They know what love is. But as we all know, the fairy tale faded. And within five years, it was clear the marriage had crumbled. 
later dueling interviews revealing that Camilla was still in the picture. Their foreign trips were now portraits of an unhappy relationship. She was in touch with her feelings. If she was mad at her spouse, there were going to be indications of that in the photographs. And there were. The funeral procession is on the south side of the park. With Diana's sudden and tragic death just a year after their divorce, Charles was a single parent of two shattered boys. They are coping extraordinarily well, but obviously the, uh, Diana's loss and death has been uh, uh, an enormous uh, loss as far as they're concerned. As the years passed, Charles slowly introducing the other woman, Camilla, to the public. Yes, it might have been an affair that rocked the monarchy, but it's endured and resulted in an incredibly happy marriage. Through it all, Charles did hundreds of royal engagements every year, which increased the queen in her 90s. By 2016, attending 530 engagements at home and abroad in just one year. Duchess Kate on dating Prince William and meeting her future father-in-law. I was quite nervous about meeting uh, William's father, but, um, but no, he's very, very welcoming and you know, very friendly. So yeah, I couldn't have, it couldn't have gone easier really for me. We've got a new member of our weather team tonight. Watch this visit to the BBC studios in Scotland, noting some weather over the Queen's favorite home, Balmoral. The potential for a few flurries over Balmoral. Who the hell wrote this script? Uh, <laughs> as the afternoon goes on. As Charles now prepares to ascend the throne, what does he do with it? Will it be more striking to us when it's held by a man that we've seen grow up as opposed to Queen Elizabeth? What are the qualities that the British monarchy represents? That's the question that Charles is going to now have to answer. This man is an absolute gem, and we should put our hands together in this country we've got him because he is, to my mind, you know, he is the next king, no doubt about it. And people said, oh, yeah, but he won't make a great king. Wait and see. This grandfather, who has spent seven decades waiting in the wings, finally will wear the crown 